Welcome to Friday Splash Play. It's the time we bring on a very special guest and we introduce them to our bullshit specs. Yeah, we are having the great Nick Ercolano on today, a man who's, I would say, really one of the coolest people out there in fantasy football. I'll put that out there right now. We're going to run him through the gamut of ride or die picks for week 14, and we're going to engage in a little passion of his as well, comparing fantasy football players to types of margaritas. So, Pete, let's hit that intro. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Splash Play, the fantasy football podcast for every game under the sun. And once again, I am Chris Spaggs, joined by your friend of mine, Peter Overset. And today we got Nick Ercolano bringing that big dog gotta eat energy to the show today. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing good, man. I don't know. Uh, I don't know who set the cool bar for you guys, but we need to we need to raise it a little bit if, if that's the. Uh, that's the name you have for me. Well, well, I mean, Spags just moved from L.A. out to the East Coast to have a child and live in the suburbs. So his barrier for cool now has has changed. OK, well, we're in, we're in the East Coast. Well, I'm in Philly now, but from New York. And actually, like Nick, the thing with you that always stuck out to me is that I always thought you were like a Brooklyn guy. And I saw watching some of your videos that you're actually in Manhattan. But like to me, you're like in my mind, you've been the fantasy football version of Nick Mullen from Come Town. We're going to start with some real esoteric references <laughs> right away. And I was like, no, he's actually like cool Sal Vetri is what I'm going to say that I landed on yesterday. Oh, I love that. I'm going to let Sal know you said that. Um, uh, I actually I actually saw Come Town uh, do a live podcast. Actually, no, they did stand up somewhere in, in New York. I was born in Brooklyn and when I and I grew up in Jersey. And when I moved back from Jersey into New York, it was back into Brooklyn. So like technically I'm, I'm a Brooklyn boy kind of through and through. But um, I've settled in Manhattan and I don't know if you're ever going to pull me out of this place. I mean, I was a Williamsburg guy. I feel like that's the one thing that can get you in. But now Williamsburg is the same price as Manhattan, so it's fucking useless. Yeah, I, that's where I, I lived in Williamsburg for a year when I moved back into Brooklyn. And it's um, it's fantastic. But I don't know, man, something about Brooklyn kind of rubs me the wrong way now. It's like it's almost it's getting a little bit too weird. And I think like people are just <laughs> buying into the weirdness to a level where like I'm not I'm no longer comfortable there. Uh, so a little, little bit of Austin. Go ahead, Pete. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, what's the Austin slogan? Uh, keep Austin weird. And Nick is like, can we make Brooklyn less weird? Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like Austin, though. I do. I do. Make Brooklyn 10% less weird. That's the campaign we're going to start today. But we appreciate Nick being here, and we appreciate all you guys being here as well. So make sure you are liking this video. Subscribe to the channel as well, whether you are watching watching on the Splash Play channel or Pete's channel. Uh, Pete, you didn't hit 10K yet, did you? I don't think so. I think uh, we're still struggling. All right. Down well, yeah, we need that, we need that Nick or Colano boost right now to get Pete to 10K right here on the show. So please subscribe to the channel and hit that like button to get seen by more people. And actually, a quick plug here for Football Outsiders. And Nick may not know this, but Nick, you did a campaign, apparently. I learned this from our marketing team today. Uh, I would push people right now to go to footballoutsiders.com slash subscribe. But Nick, you did an influencer campaign with them last summer. You may not know. You were the number two overall conversion guy last summer for them and what you were doing with them. Uh, it's, that's disappointing. I don't, I don't like coming in less than number one when it comes to the conversion rate. Yeah, I do remember. Uh, I remember working with Football Outsiders. We went, we worked through an agency, and I want to say the name of the. I don't know if I can name drop this or whatever, but uh, I think their name was the Goat Agency. Like straight oh, up. Oh shit, the Goat Agency. <laughs> yeah, I know. See, that's that's the that's the fucked up part about it is like they get those reactions even though they didn't do any. You know, like they're the Goat Agency, so you call them the Goat Agency, and then mm -hmm. there's a spiraling difference between. Um, how you interact with them. But yeah, I, I do remember uh, working with football outsiders. You guys sent me the, uh, the almanac, which was super, super cool. Um, I use that to, to say a lot of stuff throughout my uh, summer analysis videos. So now I got some free ads from Nick. So go to footballoutsiders.com slash subscribe. 99 cents a week are the packages on there, but got to give Nick a shout out. He is a man who's doing legitimate content for the people. And I think that's the main thing that jumped out to me when our marketing team mentioned it was like, oh yeah, like that makes sense. Nick's a real guy. He's going to convert better. And I'm not going to throw anybody else under the bus. Some big NFL names were also part of the influencer campaigns and literally converted one or two subs. So I feel like you got to, got to take the credit where you can get it, Nick. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if it's like, I think the key to being able to convert is is actually not having a, a sizable audience because once you start getting NFL player size, I don't feel like anyone believes you. Once you're like once you're like really big, like nothing that comes out of your mouth really makes sense anymore. So I think it's probably just the blabbering that I typically do on a on a, a typical basis. I'm sorry, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, so if I just start going off the rails, that's why. 
No, you do sound a little nasally, a little a little tired uh, today. But on that same wavelength, did you have any thoughts on uh, Pat McAfee's $30 million uh, deal with FanDuel there? Man, it's such a crazy deal with FanDuel. Um to be the, the deal was for them to be like the the main sponsor right like he was that's his sports book and it's crazy because now he's probably going to get another deal similar to that how like joe rogan or caller daddy got uh siphoned off to like spotify so he might double up on a deal like that where he gets the you know the advertiser and then gets the spotify like exclusive platform thing so i mean it just goes to speak to um just like the enormity of, of the money being thrown around in 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 our industry right now. And I think like there's never been more of an opportunity for, you know, people to one break into the industry, but like go about it their, their own way. You know, like Pete, you're, you know, you're off on your own now. You're not working your full-time job as of like last year. And there are a lot of people that can, can do it. And you don't necessarily need to, um, you don't necessarily need to be working for like a bigger brand. You don't need to be working for a bigger company. Um, there, there are so many different ways to do it. So that stuff's exciting, but I think we're just seeing like the very, very, you know, tip of the iceberg and, that stuff's going to start streaming down to like the smaller, the smaller people like, you know, myself, yourself and anyone else who's doing individual content. So it's, it's cool to see. And sometimes it's great to work for a bigger company and hope that they can ride their coattails of equity and then maybe they'll pay off at some point. But, you know, different strokes for different folks out there. But definitely a good thing. And Pat, you know, Pete and I have talked about this a little bit, Nick, but Pat, I know from my Barstool days, he was there starting the brand uh, that ended up being his whole thing now. And, mm-hmm. like, the guy hustled. Like, I know that's a lot of your ethos on your channel as well, but it's just a matter of getting up to that every single day, doing content, you know, obviously being personable and being smart if you can, uh, but definitely just doing it every day. And, you know, you've been talking a lot to content creators out there so before we get to like the news and the other stuff that we have to do any sort of overall thoughts for content creators you can give out there as somebody that i feel like is kind of held up as one of the inspirational characters in the whole youtube space um yeah i mean this is this is something i put a lot of thought into just the overall idea of um trying to help other content creators i think like i said there's so much opportunity out there and and a series that i'm going to kick off this this summer is or this off season is hopefully uh from like a to z trying to teach any normal person to go from you know, the idea stage of, of wanting to create content to being able to like fully monetize and hopefully, you know, replace their salary or whatnot um, on a content creators, uh, you know, day to day kind of kind of work. And again, I think like the whole idea of going viral is like a really, really poor um, thought process to have, because like you see the people that are exciting and the people that are viral, but ninety nine point nine percent of people that make full time living as content creators aren't aren't viral. And when you can like kind of peel that back and look at um, baby steps along the way and like enjoy the process, you're going to do just that. You're going to enjoy the process. And like, that's, that's where um, like winning and losing kind of separates itself in the content creation space. But you know, you you always have to look at yourself as a, a marketer first and then whatever you're doing. Secondly, like, all right, we're fantasy football people, but we need to market ourselves first. If you're like fucking as weird as it is, like you're, you're a, you're you're a marketer first you're a plumber second right you want to become the most popular plumber in the fucking tri-state area you can probably do that by getting popular on tiktok so i I want people to kind of like open up their their eyes to where they need to be um on platform wise and to be honest with you like we have a really good grasp on youtube obviously so we're going to squeeze that for as much as we can but if we weren't in the position that we were right now i would probably literally be spending 99 percent of my time putting up videos on tiktok it's like, Pete, you got any thoughts on this? Obviously, you're in the same space here. I know you guys have talked shop. And I did mention before the show that I was watching a, a long form interview that Nick did with Pete on Nick's channel. So if it's worth, if you love the Peter Overs at Universe here, go check him out nine months ago before he figured this out better. I think you were still full time, but you got any thoughts, Pete? Well, yeah, I, it made me think of a thread I remember seeing from Nick. I'm pretty sure you had this thread about some of the kind of like Twitter doctors and stuff in the space and how just in general too, like, these guys are, you know, great, like exponentially increasing their business by being marketers on Twitter and with YouTube and, you know, whether that's fantasy content or just whatever you like, just leveraging that as a marketing tool content as marketing for those other businesses that people don't traditionally think of. And I think you were Mm -hmm. using it in the context of like being a thought leader and it's like your, your bona fides don't even have to be that good. Like if you're putting out content, people will just naturally associate you as a thought leader, which is both exciting and scary because it yeah. can be harnessed by bad people as well. Yeah. And also Nick, how'd you get the neon underdog light? But Pete, a man who's been on board with underdog and investor in the company and everything, no neon light for you. Um, 
I actually went to their office in Brooklyn and hijacked this like visit. <laughs> <laughs> but but short of that, um, I well, I remember Brett Coleman. They gave Brett Coleman one and he he's like so cinematic with his videos. And I saw it in the background of his video and I'm like, yo, I really need one of those. It looks so crispy and so good. Um, so I kept like just nagging their team about it. And I was like, I want a light. I want a light. Like, OK, we might have one in Brooklyn or whatever. Like next day I was there. I was like, I'm bringing this home. Thank you, though. Yeah. Uh, and also let the record show uh, Spags that uh, Nick is also all of those things for underdog and on, on a much bigger scale. So he he has earned the, uh, the, the lighting more than I have. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if not here I'm not getting the underdog bag yet, but keep in mind, anybody out there from underdog listening, I'm ready to take it anytime now. Let's talk about some news that actually matters, though. And here's a serious one to start. And Pete, I know you wrote about in the Fantasy Night, uh, Life newsletter, but I want to give you the chance to talk about it here. But Marius Thomas passing away at 33. I thought your uh, message in the Fantasy Life newsletter was pretty nice to see. I know our pal Matthew Barry also caught a little bit of flack for saying uh, he was a fantasy legend. Like, he was a fantasy legend. He was a guy that was really meaningful to a lot of people in different ways. Tim Tebow had a nice little tweet about him, too and the guy that he was but anything you want to say about Demarius Thomas as a converted Broncos fan yeah no it was just he I, I always remember that draft it was like one of the first NFL drafts I paid really close attention to and uh I was I really wanted the Broncos to take either him or Des Bryant uh and so they they took him a couple picks ahead of Des Bryant Des Bryant had more question marks coming to that draft and then Demarius I think had a foot issue coming out of uh, Georgia Tech as well so yeah he had that awesome walk-off touchdown in that playoff wild card game against the Steelers where Tib Tebow had the little play action hit him on a slant and then uh, he went on to have those monster seasons with uh with uh Peyton Manning so yeah he is a he I do think he is a, a fantasy legend um, maybe not in the way some other people think about it, but he had that stretch there where he was a locked and loaded, you know, top three wide receiver play every week. And yeah, just way too young. I mean, 33 years old and just so, so sad. And it sounded like it was seizures is basically what I had heard mm -hmm. uh, reading the reports. But yeah, rest in peace uh, to Demarius Thomas. Nick, you got anything on Demarius Thomas or you just want to keep it going? Um, I, I remember first, I hate how people are so weird about that, how they try, they're going to try to cancel like Matt Barry for saying he was yeah. a fantasy legend. Like he literally, most of us know him because we played fantasy and he was like one of our top picks and we like cheered for him because of like our positive memories that are associated with him are literally through fantasy. So I don't understand why you can't say something like that. But yeah, like I remember, I literally remember using like first round picks on Demarius Thomas in my personal fantasy draft and like. I don't know, man. It's 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 weird when things like that start happening. They they kind of snap you into reality a bit. I didn't realize he was that young too, thirty three. I would have guessed like thirty eight, forty ish in that range. Um, so it's you know it, it's sad to see that. Yeah, it also just re reminds you. Just I always have that thing with the age too, and like how quick the league like chews up and and spits mm -hmm. players out. And wide receivers have a more longevity than than even running backs too. But it's like sometimes you'll see a running back name from like 2015 and it'll feel like a distant memory because the league just chews these guys up. Yeah. And it feels like DT hasn't been in the league for like six years now, right? Like and there's no way he left the league when he was like 26, 20. I feel like he was in the league. Some some of the math here just doesn't add up. He re sure he retired this this uh this summer, this past summer. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was on the Jets for a minute, like a couple, I think yeah. last year even might have been on the Jets. Uh, but yeah, then he, he signed with the Broncos to retire with them. And yeah, these guys get chewed up and, you know, the seizure thing, I think you could probably tie to football. Point being, I think, you know, you got to appreciate these guys while you have them, whether it be on a fantasy level, whether it's a guy on your team. And yeah, I'm with you. I think the Matthew Berry cancellation thing, uh, we are very much team Berry here, but <laughs> um, you got to appreciate these guys however you get them. And I think uh, certainly you got to touch a lot of people in his life. So rest in peace to him. Keep it moving, though. Uh, one thing in the actual game last night, Chase Claypool celebrating. I feel like we've got to talk about it briefly. Uh, got a first down. Then I was kind of looking around for the refs and then did the, the first down point thing that every player does. And now just getting excoriated on social media. And, and Pete, you know how this goes. I know how it goes to get excoriated on social media. But you <laughs> know, too, I think in various ways how people respond to these things. And you feel like the Chase Claypool shitting all over him is deserved or no? I don't know. It sounds like he might take Nick's uh, comment to heart. And if he wasn't crushing in the NFL, maybe just spend 99% of his time making TikTok videos. I mean, maybe that's the strategy for Chase Claypool. I honestly didn't even, I saw some of the conversation on it on Twitter this morning. I missed it uh, live as I am known to do uh, on Island games. Uh, it seemed like the perfect thing for people to argue about on Twitter that actually doesn't matter whatsoever. 
Yeah, our, our pal Eric Bimefor was catching some shrapnel. He was getting a little bit of – I think he was – the ratio was going in a bad way for Bimefor because he was like, why do people care about this? And it's like, I get it. I get why people are mad. But also the other guy knocking the ball away from him didn't help. I don't know, Nick, if you want to throw in – chime in your takes here. I'm sure Clay, Chase Claypool's watching the show right now. Dying to hear your thoughts. Um, I, I was wherever Pete was because I'm going to be honest. I didn't, I didn't actually catch <laughs> – most of the game last night, I I went out uh, with a friend to grab some drinks, but the last thing I remember was um, <laughs> deciding between Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison, and I threw Dalvin Cook into my lineup, and and then Ooh. I told my friend Animal, um, you know, if he re-injures his shoulder, then I'm I'm going to allow him to take a hammer to my shoulder, and uh, <laughs> and then halfway through the game, I'm getting text messages like, let's fucking go, you know, and uh, I'm like, I don't even know what happened, but I look at my fantasy team this morning, we've got a 35 burger from Dalvin Cook, so I can't speak on the Claypool thing, but I'm really excited about Dalvin Cook. In the chat, too, Josh saying, Claypool's a clown, LOL, absolutely deserved. Kyle saying, Dragon him is just indicative about the Steelers' feeling and how they feel about having a showboat receiver. I think that's certainly part of it as well. And, um, you know, I think you can you can read in whatever you want about the reaction of Chase Claypool. I think he, he's an idiot, but I think he's not that big of an idiot as way people were treating him last night. Other news that actually does matter, if Mike Williams continues to test the negative, seems on track to play versus the Giants. Pete, we talked about this yesterday. I feel like Mike Williams has to be really, really well-received, whether you're playing in season long, whether you're playing in DFS. How do you feel about Mike Williams' prospects this week with no uh, no Keenan Allen out there? Yeah, I mean, he's going to be an awesome play. We saw him crushing earlier this season when Keenan was playing and kind of garnering high target totals, and then that pendulum kind of swung back in favor of Keenan more recently. He did have a good game, cleared 100 yards last week. So yeah, without Keenan uh, and going against the Giants, I mean, he should have, what, eight, nine targets, and then we'll also get some deep shots against a bad secondary. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about him. Nick, how are you feeling about uh, the prospects here for Mike Williams? And I know you're not a DFS guy. The Josh Palmers of the world were going to get touted up to, to, to the gills this week. But for season long, anything matter to you with Mike Williams getting a little bit more of that target share? Um, yeah, I mean, you got to like Mike Williams more just naturally. He's probably going to see, you know, upwards of like 12 targets this week. I do think it's, you know, the Giants aren't a good team, obviously, but I think they're like a sneaky, semi-tough pass defense there where this might be a game where it's kind of like slow and a lot lower scoring than people. You know, you might see Justin Herbert on the slate and be like, oh, you know, 27 fantasy points. This could be a day where he just throws for like 250 and two touchdowns and Mike Williams probably eats his, but the running backs probably get a ton of touches. Um, I'm sure New York is going to try to grind as much clock as they can to keep them off the field so um overall i'm probably a little bit lower on the chargers offense as a team but like you know there's nothing that's going to stop mike williams right now because keenan allen's off the field and that really is his only obstacle to having big games on a weekly basis yeah both mike williams and austin eckler certainly certainly the ceiling has got to be there a little bit more this week melvin gordon also practice should be go now versus detroit and nick i saw you talking about javante williams being to you a, a run-of-the-mill mid mid first round pick coming up uh for next season you're already starting on the best ball drafts but javante williams if you're playing him in season long are you going to trust him this week with melvin gordon available to vulture some touches away yeah, 100%. Um, I feel like I, I'm not really sure how I feel about the situation, but it's like any objective eyeballs, you can't see what he did last week and then assume he's not at worst, you know, the 60% touch guy in that backfield. And there's going to be a lot to go around, I think, between both of them because they're they're playing against Detroit and naturally, you know, there should be like 35 touches between the two running backs. I think what Denver's proven, though, this year is that they're very, very clearly intent on using some sort of committee back there. Like Javante looked great last week, but I don't think that, you know, means Melvin Gordon's about to get into like a five touch role. I think we'll see something kind of similar to what we saw in the beginning of the year. I would say like Javante probably gets in the 18 touch range. Maybe Melvin's down at like 12 or 13, something like that. But Javante is clearly taking over the lead back uh, role in my eyes. There's no way he, he isn't going forward. You think so, Pete? Do you think that Javante Williams actually gets away from the 50-50 split that's been killing your love for Javante Williams? You've been touting him all year long, and it does seem like maybe he deserves a little bit more after that breakout game. Well, my my thought, at least for this week, is you were able to start Javante in a timeshare, a 50-50 timeshare even before this. Now you have the genie out of the bottle kind of aspect, and they get the Lions. So I would feel comfortable even if it was a 50-50, and I'm more with Nick. I think at worst, this feels like a 60-40 now in favor of Javante and a really good matchup. So I, I think he's an awesome start uh, this week. I don't. I would have to be absolutely loaded at running back to sit him. On the other side, we are going to have, looks like, no DeAndre Swift, perhaps no TJ Hawkinson. Both guys not practicing yet. We'll see if they somehow get in last minute here. But in this spot, Pete, are you willing to go to Jamal Williams? And worth pointing out, the snap shares last week, not that far away from him and Godwin Izabuke. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, Jamal Williams is fine in PPR leagues. Uh, I think he's just not super exciting. And this feels like a pretty bad spot for the Lions against the Broncos. We've seen the Broncos defense really held the Chiefs in check. I, I can't imagine that Jared Goff and, and co are going to be able to move the ball here. Well, so yeah, I mean, as a PPR start fine, but I'm not super excited to play Jamal Williams. Nick, any lions at all for you here with the fact they are missing two of their lead really lead guys all year long, Swift and Hawkinson potentially not being in against Denver. Yeah. I, I like Jamal Williams. This feels like, um, one of those instances where everyone's going to take this one game sample size after seeing, you know, a four year career of Jamal Williams and what he can do in the passing game. So I, you know, is, are we going to be surprised when Jamal Williams catches five or six passes this upcoming game? Not at all. And I, I probably, I think that's more likely to happen than not happen. So I can see him getting another 15 touches, um, you know, maybe 15 carries or 13 carries or something, but like five or six targets in this one. So I'm not like going to read too much into last week's game. I think Jamal Williams is clearly, um, yeah, I don't think he's like a great start, but you're definitely going to get him into your lineups at this point because you probably don't have that many other options. Jets and Saints also running back machinations going on here. No Tevin Coleman. Austin Walter is apparently going to get a lot more work this week. Ty Johnson still in the mix there. And Alvin Kamara also practicing this week should be good to go. Nick, do you like the running backs on either side here in this Jets Saints game? Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like Kamara is probably the consensus overall top play this week, right? Like RB1, if, if Mark Ingram is going to be out this week and they're going to have a game in which, you know, they'll probably have good game script. I, I, I could see Kamara going for like three touchdowns in this game. This is like his welcome back game. Um, on the other side of things, like I haven't really been interested in a Jets running back, all, maybe Michael Carter to, to a sense, but I don't get like why, why they don't give Ty Johnson some run. Like he'll make explosive plays and he'll look good at times. And then all of a sudden he gets relegated to behind someone named fucking Austin Walters. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know anything about Austin Walters, but clearly they're going to give him a little bit of run here. Um, So I'm picking him up in Dynasty Leagues if I can. I'm not... Even, like, best case scenario, Uh, like, even if you have someone getting 60% of the touches while Michael Carter is out, it always amounts to like literally six fantasy points you know like 60 yards at the best they're not scoring touchdowns they're not catching more than two passes so it's like it's hard to get excited about anybody in the backfield and zach wilson not a lover of checkdowns either pete how about you do you see any having any jets backs in your lineups this week or any of your big dollar lineups i guess or maybe kamara for you yeah no no jets backs kamara does look really interesting i do think him and eckler uh are kind of the clear-cut uh top plays at at running back this week and yeah, I was looking at the the sim results on Run the Sims earlier, and Kamara looks looks awesome relative to what the field's going to want to do. So yeah, I'm I'm in on Kamara for sure. And one news item, and Pete, I don't know if there are any others that struck you as important, but I thought the tight end situation in Cleveland's interesting. David and Joku are going to be on the COVID list. Harrison Bryant out, so it looks like we'll get some unencumbered Austin Hooper run, a, a thing that I'm sure everybody out there has been dying to hear all year long. Pete going against the Ravens, Austin Hooper worth any shares to you? I mean fine yeah <laughs> sure i i hadn't even i i had missed the Nijoku stuff there um yeah i guess he's fine i mean tight end down there in that range it's just like you're just praying for a touchdown uh cleveland may, maybe things have been fixed out of the bye but their offense has not looked inspiring outside of the run game all year nick how about you any thoughts on the cleveland tight end situation and by the way point here why i think you're right to care more about season long because these are the kind of things you have to worry about when you're sweating drafting <laughs> lineups and, oh yeah is, is austin hooper worth the three thousand this week <laughs> Yeah, no, there's like 22 tight ends. I would probably still start <laughs> over Austin Hooper right now. So he just like all those guys from tight end 12 to 20 are the same. Like you said, yeah. you're just hoping he scores a touchdown, but he doesn't even really offer you a big playability. You know what I mean? At least some of these guys are like fast or like run a good 40. So maybe they'll break off like a 30 or 40 yard play. It's just it's not even there with Austin Hooper, you know? Yeah, I think that seems like a fair one. Pete, any others you want to bring here? I know you would hint at the Debo news, but he didn't practice yesterday. I feel like he's not going to play, but do you have anything else you want to bring? Well, we could mention just in for the Niners, uh, Eli Mitchell didn't practice again mm -hmm. today, and Jeff Wilson has been a full practice. So I think we're heading toward a Jeff Wilson, Jamichael Hasey split backfield, which I feel like might be a mess for fantasy with Wilson kind of getting the early down carries and Hasty getting the pass work. So I don't, and, and the Bengals have been pretty decent against the run as well. So I don't know. I want to be more excited about a 49ers running back, but this feels kind of gross to me. Yeah, I'm with you. Hasty really pops up a lot, even if you give him 20 snaps in my projections. And I think that's something that uh, gives me enough concern for Jeff Wilson that I don't know you can trust him heavily, but certainly some appealing options to go to if you are desperate for a running back in your season long leagues or for DFS this weekend. But now's the time. And Nick, I know you did a lot of work on this one. We're, we love comparing players to random esoteric things. And today is the time for to compare fa fantasy players to margaritas. And Pete, if you want to slate it any further than that, feel free. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I- anyone who who follows Nick knows about his love of margaritas. He has a margarita tattoo. I once offended him in Miami by giving a margarita way too high of a rating just because it was my first time out of my house during COVID and I was caught up in social euphoria. But this is the preeminent authority on margaritas. I was in a New York bar with him when it was freezing cold. And, you know, I'm ordering Guinness and he's over here ordering margaritas. So this man, I can vouch for his margarita love. And uh, today we're going to we're going to dive deep on it. It's not good. It's slowly killing me, man. <laughs> Have you invested in a Margaritaville maker for yourself? I have all sorts of margarita appliances and accessories just laying all over the place here that are that are just doused in lime juice that I probably haven't cleaned in years. <laughs> yeah, I have one that I that I got here that my girlfriend is like, this is not going to be in the kitchen anymore now that we're in an actual house. So it's down in the basement with me and I got like syrup on the bottom of it. I've been like cleaning it every day and it just won't fucking clean. It's a nightmare. But that's not where we're going to start for the analogies. And Nick, you did all the research here, so I'll let you go first. Is there, is there a player margarita combination that you want to put together and bring some people out there? Yeah, um, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I wrote down like seven or eight different um <laughs> players that i feel like you can kind of compare to different margaritas uh where do we start let's start with uh we can start with kj osborne i think Ooh. you can you can compare kj osborne to a margarita with sugar around the rim instead of salt because at first you know when they give it to you you're like what the fuck is this and then you drink it and then you're like whoa it's got a little bit of electricity to the game here you know what i mean like you don't expect it from kj osborne and then he pops off the sugar around the rim is uh is something i can get behind you know I don't know if I've ever had a marg with sugar and, and set of salt, but uh, how, how well, often? Throw Osborne how, in your lineup and you'll know exactly how it feels, man. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me this last night before lock? Uh, um, so, I yeah, like sometimes that. they offer that as an option if you want salt or sugar, which I find to be odd. Like I would always be team salt, but I, I get the concept. And I have a Vikings one too, Pete. I, we could throw it to you too, but I have I feel like there's a spicy jalapeno margarita on the Vikings. And we saw the good version of it yesterday. Dalvin Cook is my spicy jalapeno margarita because you get this sometimes. And then sometimes they have like, oh, the special salt on top that's got the pepper in it, like flakes in it. It's like, wow, this is a fucking amazing margarita. Sometimes you get it somewhere else and they just throw a jalapeno in a regular margarita and go like, yeah, you're good to go. Those are the Dalvin cook weeks where you get Thielen getting two touchdowns Dalvin not good enough in the past game but then yesterday you get the best version of him 200 yards his shoulders hurt nobody wants to play him he's good that's my Dalvin cook my spicy jalapeno margarita Pete I like it um my issue with this segment and this is where Nick is going to shine I'm going to run out of different margaritas <laughs> to even compare players to so I was going to do one that was more a little esoteric. It's like you go to a fancy cocktail bar and they have their spin on the margarita. And it's always something like a pomegranate mango lime. Mm. Mar- like it's, it sounds too much. And this is the Cordero Patterson where you're like, is this going to be too much? I don't really want this in my lineup. There's other guys I like more. And then they bring it out to you. And because it's a good place and a good cocktail bar, it's perfect. It's not too sweet, has just enough salt on it. It's really uh, understated. And you're like, oh, yeah, Cordell Patterson is, of course, going to score a touchdown here. So I'll say the random multi-fruit uh, cocktail from a nice cocktail bar. I, I like, like that one. Always- we always come back to Cordell <laughs> Patterson and Mike Davis in these comparison segments, and it's always mean to Mike Davis and very flattering to Cordero. I, I tried really hard to think of one for Cordell Patterson. I was like, what's the most like versatile margarita? And then I just got two in my head, and I was like, you know, I'll just leave it, and Pete ripped it off. All right, I'm going to go with... Uh, Not Marque- all of these analogies hold up here, all right? <laughs> Marquez Callaway is a strawberry margarita because that shit only hits in the summer. And at no other time of the year. <laughs> That's so good. The preseason margarita. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, all right, I got one. I will say, so this is, again, a real esoteric one, but you know when you go to a nice Mexican restaurant and they have the margarita with their name on it, it's like, oh, like El Cholo's margarita here. Of course that's going to be good because they put their name on it. That's Cooper Cup, where you know what you're going to get. It could be a basic margarita, but if they're willing to put their brand on it week after week, you're going to get those nine targets. Maybe it'll be 100 yards, maybe it'll be two touchdowns, but you know he's going to get the work, and I feel like that's where it is, where you can trust the margarita, trust the establishment. That's Cooper Cup for you. I went. Um, I had Cooper Cup as well on mine as the the straight up classic margarita. It's almost right. always the right choice, and there's like so much underrated upside there as well. There's there's too much opportunity cost for me trying to bullshit my way through some of these. So I want more from Nick's prepared list here. Okay, um, we're gonna go with Chase Claypool is <laughs> uh, the frozen margarita. 
because oh. it looks really fun on the outside, <laughs> but you'll never be able to drink more than one in a row. Like you'll never be able to put them into your lineup more than one week in a row. I love See, it. I have a frozen margarita too. I went with Jared Goff as my frozen margarita because you know like what it's going to be going in. And sometimes you're going to get like Jared Goff thrown 60 times. And this margarita is like, oh, it's a perfect frozen margarita. And sometimes you just have brain freeze and you're like, why did I do this? Like what, what kind of choices am I making that led me here? That's how I feel about Jared Goff. And that's how I feel about frozen margaritas. What okay. about Nick? Is, is this the same for the clay pool? But like, I'm talking like a Vegas foot long frozen margarita. Is there, is there a different Ooh. player for this one? I almost feel like that could be quarter L Patterson, honestly. Like there, there's, it's so much fun. There's so much upside to it. Um, Do you I know guess what maybe that, it kind of feels like the people who take a quarterback in the first round, you know, like the <laughs> Vegas tourists that just like the, they're like, Oh my God, I want Tom Brady on my fantasy team. I'm going to get yeah. a foot long margarita and walk the strip. That's very good. That's very good. Um, Any other margaritas for you, Nick? I, we've covered mine. I, and Pete, just to be clear, I pre-wrote mine because I didn't want to embarrass myself in front of Nick as a margarita connoisseur. So if you got any more, Nick, feel free to air them out. Okay. Um, I was going to go with Pete Carroll, more of like a, a bartender role. So okay. he's, the guy, he's the guy who makes a margarita with orange juice in it, right? And no matter how many people tell him it's wrong, that that's not the right equation, he insists that that's how a proper margarita is made. And then he fires his bar back who suggested, <laughs> yes. uh, and he says, we actually need more orange in these yes. margaritas, everyone. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, um, I, who, I think there's probably a good amount of coach ones. I feel like there's some Belichick margaritas floating out there, but what else? Nick, empty the cannon here. Keep giving us more margaritas. All right. I'm just going to rip off a few here. We got uh, <laughs> yeah. Julio, Julio Jones is, uh, is a marg that was simply just left out at room temperature for too long. <laughs> all, all the ice is melted and you're just left with one big shiny mess. Uh, I had Rashad Penny as a spicy marg uh, because I am not good with spicy things. So it is neither touching my mouth nor my my lineup. And then lastly, I had a kind of lazy one, but it was Darnell Mooney as a Mezcal marg. So it's okay. not for not for the faint of heart. But if it hits, then it's popping off. Right. It's Mooney one of those things for smokiness. That's fun. Yeah, because you, you go to the bar uh, thinking you want the classic margarita Allen Robinson. He's not available. And they say we do have a Mezcal Marg Darnell Mooney. And then it's pleasantly surprising. Mm hmm. No, who's the like dive bar margarita? Like, who's the one that you put it? I feel like that's Christian McCaffrey this year, where you're like, oh, like I've heard about margaritas before. Let me get a margarita. And then you try it, you're like, what? What is this? This is just watered it's, down. Christian McCaffrey's like, in this cup. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey's like a margarita that was roofied. Just leave you laying in a ditch, wondering where you went wrong. That is the <laughs> yeah. Christian McCaffrey margarita experience. Pete, you got lapped here. I got to say that. Uh, I know I did. I, I didn't plan anything out. I was just trying to riff and uh, build on on your guys' great work. I, I knew I couldn't commit uh, compete with with Nick on the margarita game. I love margaritas, uh, but it's it's hard to compete with Nick on that level. Yeah, well, to be fair, like I told you before we got on, like I, I did more prep for this little segment <laughs> than I did for most of the fantasy stuff I've actually done up to this point in the year. So that's well, how Nick, it goes. I don't think you probably don't need the plugs at this point, but give it to people anyway. I know we're simul. I think we are, we are simulcasting on your channel right but uh whatever the case may be people know your deal hopefully by now but tell everybody what they can expect and and also some of the big moves you're making with your company uh yeah so we're not simulcasting right now but i asked pete if we can if i could take this video and like upload it as an actual okay, video okay. to my channel so if we could do that that'd be that'd be great never never like to let content go to waste um but yeah i mean i'm, I'm, I'm like on my channel <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? i like no, to get it out to as many people as possible you, you fucking asshole you <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no no so we uh yeah we do most of our stuff on on youtube um a lot of it is fantasy football centric we do a lot of dynasty stuff in the off season as well but um we live in new york so we like to take advantage of the city here so you know we'll put up a lot of vlogs just kind of following the behind the scenes of us building the brand and we are um in negotiations actually to sign our first office lease and we're going to be making a few uh full-time hires within the next like month or two so we're actually for the first time ever like really trying to scale this thing into a into a media brand so a lot of exciting shit coming in in 2022 and um yeah man i'm just looking forward to everything did you make sure to check out next channel if you haven't and pete go ahead i was just gonna say i can't remember if it was on your instagram or i saw some video of a office you were looking at that looked sweet was that did you guys end up getting that one um so that is that's our top choice and we're going back and forth with the landlord on that place but you know i don't want to like throw anything out there but that's looking like it's probably gonna end up being the hq yeah that looks did you awesome. get a place that's like walking distance to your apartment um 
it's right near like Penn Station. So some of the people we're going to be working with, it's not necessarily like in the summer. I can definitely like walk to it or bike to it right now when it's cold out. Probably not. It's like 25 or so blocks. So it's kind of like pushing the the limit on how much physical activity I want to put into the day. But it's like a really good location for anyone coming in. Like if Peter or you got any of you guys are in in, you know, in New York and you come into like Penn Station or whatever, obviously just come right by the uh, right by the office because it's it's easy for anyone coming in from New York. And it's kind of like central to anyone that's living in New York also. So. You could do a little guest booking too there. But yeah, go check out Nick's channel if you haven't yet. I Again, I was watching it late last night just trying to catch up on Nick's work and at least found myself down the rabbit hole. Lots of fun stuff he's doing in the vlog content. I saw you you survived COVID, which I'm very happy for you, Nick. And I think you're all the better for it on the other side. But it's time to do our ride or die picks, Pete. And I'm going to let you introduce the concept because again, I think Nick's pretty cool. I don't want to embarrass myself by talking about our silly children's game where we make up the rules as we go. <laughs> Um, that is, that is the case here. I, I think I adequately described it to Nick in the DMS, but we are going to go, uh, game by game here. We can pick, uh, any kind of bet imaginable, a player to score over X amount of fantasy points, uh, a player to outscore multiple teammates. You can even go cross game. You can say Taysom Hill outscores Tom Brady. And then the, the game within the game is whether your pick is worth one point, which is like a 50, 50 kind of pick three points, which is more like, say it has a third of a chance of hitting or a 10-pointer is a true Hail Mary sub 10%. So what generally happens is Spags picks things that would be like a 6 or a 7-pointer, but we do not have 6 or 7-pointers. It's only 1, 3, or 10, and then we argue with each other much to the delight of the viewers. <laughs> Yeah, so there we go. So that is the ride or die picks for you. And it's it's always fun when Pete just throws me under the bus on the way out too. Again, Nick, I'm trying to look cool for Nick, Pete. Just be like, oh, Spags is really great at the game. Like he's really pumped <laughs> me up a little. I mean, some things, it's, it's hard to make you look cool. I try really hard, oh. but I mean, there's only so much I could do. I'm the coolest. <laughs> <laughs> Our first game up, Seattle getting 24.5 implied points. Houston, 16 implied points. That total is getting downright ugly. And Pete, set the bar here with your ride or die pick for this game. Okay, so, you know, the narrative is that, you know, Russ is is kind of broken right now. There's also the the long-held narrative that both Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf uh, can't go off in the same game together. I submit to this humble jury a 10-pointer if both DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett score over 25 PPR points. I think that's a 10-pointer. Nick oh, looked I, a little skeptical. That has to be a 10 pointer. I'll okay. give you a okay. I'll give you a 25 point. I'll give you Ooh. one point for every PPR point. <laughs> I'll I'll take my I'll take my 10 for both over 25. Yeah. Luckily, like Russell Wilson is broken, yes, but you know, um the Houston Texans are basically like the the percocet of fantasy football <laughs> defenses. They will, they will fix anything that's broken for you. He'll push through no matter how much pain he's in. Nick, you right. know where the bar is set now, so feel free to take your first ride or die pick. Okay. Um, let me just ask you quickly is this i can kind of go riff off any game or do i have to go within this game right now yeah we go game by game so just seattle houston for now okay um literally i i wrote one down for almost every single game and this was like one that i didn't actually get one down for so off the rip we're gonna go with um another hallmark of this game is normally like i'll say something and spags won't have one ready and he'll just try to pick the opposite of mine <laughs> okay. he'll say can i get you know 10 points if lockett and metcalf are both under 15 uh fantasy points and that's so called that's leverage in the biz <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's go um gerald everett outscores davis mills okay i'm gonna submit that as a i have to choose one three or ten like which one i submit it as so we kind of sometimes you lead the witness here um to me, this looks like a three-pointer based on projections. I would agree it's a three-pointer. Okay. okay. That's a pretty much a turnkey three-pointer. Yeah. Like, yeah, one of the ones you get out of the box and you go like, oh, I got to fix a few. got to sand something down here, but it's still a three-pointer. <laughs> <laughs> I will say in this game for me, how about Brandon Cooks outscoring both Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf? Is that, what's that, Pete? S Brandon Cooks outscoring both those wide receivers? Yes. Um, Both feels like a 10 to see, me. This is the classic Spags bullshit. This is like a seven pointer. What do you say, Nick? I would I would give it closer to three than it is ten. That's what I'm leaning. All right, I think fine. we've I'll, seen I'll, the, I'll the big games out of Cooks before, so it's not like you know, it's not anything insane. Spags, I will, but I always like giving you a chance. If he outscores them by five points, I'll give you the ten. Four and a half. Fine. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to like, this, I don't is, give a this is what happens. <laughs>
<laughs> got, got to push back a little. As you know, Nick, you're a businessman. You got to negotiate a little. Even if you get that half point, it's worth everything at that moment in Very time. Fair. Next game up, Atlanta, 19.5 implied points. Carolina, 22 implied points. Cam Newton starting again. P.J. Walker might get some snaps is the exciting news item in this one. And, Nick, you can go first. All right. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a Falcons fan, and I know how this story ends up, and it's with uh, with Cam dropping a 25-plus point fantasy burger on us. We have literally the worst pass rush in the NFL. Our coverage outside of one man, A.J. Terrell, is just atrocious. So I imagine this being, you know, the, the storyline is like, is Cam going to get benched? I think he comes back after a strong bye week and uh, throws up more than 25 fantasy points in this one. I think that's a classic three. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think another three. All right, Pete, yeah. what do you want? Cam looks pretty good here. I agree. Should we do something with our pomegranate mango margarita, Cordero Patterson? <laughs> um, You know what? Let's, we, we got, we got Kelsey. We got Kittle this week. We got Mark Andrews. Do I get a 10 pointer if Kyle Pitts is the highest scoring tight end on the week? The highest scoring tight end on the week out of everybody and include um, yeah, in, including Sunday night football, Monday night football. Okay, yeah, that's a 10. That's I can 10. sign you up for I'll 10 for sure. Yeah. All right. All right. So I think if we were to look at any projection system, we would argue that Mike Davis pretty lowly projected compared uh, to one Cordell Patterson, one dish delicious pomegranate margarita. Mike Davis outscoring Cordell Patterson. Is that a 10 pointer? That's a 10 pointer for me. Okay. I will take that as a 10 pointer. I have him as half the projection, but he did, he did out snap him last week. Got to take the Mike Davis victories where you can get him. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think it's, I think it's a savvy one on your part. It's again, probably like a seven or an eight, but we're going to round up for you, man. Thank there's you really, God. there's game theory behind this, huh? Give me a pat like... on the head. Yeah. The game theory is really like whining and hoping that Pete will allow me to actually get <laughs> yeah. that better plus EV. Instead of just dog shit. <laughs> but there's manipulation here too, because Spags and I argued about Mike Davis, uh, through much of the summer. So he knows he can be like, Mike Davis sucks. You have to allow me to get 10 points for this. So there's a lot, there's games within games here. All right, next game up, we got Jacksonville, 17.3 implied points. Tennessee, 26.3 implied points. Julio Jones back in this one, and I guess I'm due to go first, and boy, not a lot to love here. Um, Marvin Jones, highest scoring position player in the game, Pete, is that 10? So you're throwing out Tanhill and Lawrence and saying he outscores Robinson, Julio, those guys? Yeah, Hilliard, Foreman. <sighs> I don't know that. It's That's an like ugly game, Pete. <laughs> but Marvin Jones, Nick, what's your, what's your read on it? Where are you at on Marvin Jones? Does he have anything left? Dude, it's so, oh, does he have anything left? Um, I'm sure he's got like one really annoying big game left out of him. I mean, it could yeah. be this game, but like, I don't think this is spite. I, I, I wouldn't feel good in my heart to give this a 10. I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't either. Yeah, I'll, I'll do. I'll there give was like you the- a clear, a clear alpha or top dog that he was going against like point wise that you're like, this guy is a rock solid, like top seven fantasy running back. Then I'm like, okay, that's that's a ten pointer. Yeah, just just say highest scoring guy in the game. The quarterbacks don't even project. All right, I'll that throw well. in the QBs. I do have Tannehill projected stupidly high, but I'll I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, I mean the problem is like Nick was saying, James Robinson might not even play, and Julio mm-hmm. Jones is coming back from what like a six week layoff, and those are the top two other skill positions. They got guys. Carlos Hyde then getting all that workload. Get out of here. <laughs> all right, Pete, what do you want? I'm gonna use the the. Uh, the Mike Davis logic back on Spags. I want 10 points if LaVisca is the highest scoring uh, player in the game, quarterbacks included. Uh, yeah, that's a 10. That's might, might be a 100-pointer at this yeah, point. Yeah, you can have as many points as you want. All right, that. let the record show I'm requesting 100 points <laughs> if LaVisca outscores everyone in this game. I'm going to be really bummed if this is how you win the year. LaVisca's <laughs> <So this laughs> been all putting 100 points on us. Nick, what do you want? Uh, I want a 10 pointer that Dontrell Hilliard finishes again as a, well, I guess he had a buy the previous week. He was a top 10 fantasy running back. I think we get another top 10 fantasy running back performance out of Dontrell Hilliard in this one with Jeremy Nichols returning. Hmm. Yeah. I top 10. I, yeah, I think that's a 10 pointer. Yeah, I agree. I don't think McNichols is going to take that much away. I feel like Hilliard's kind of past him would be my thought. I, think- I, threw, I threw that in there in case you were on the borderline of like a six or seven. You're like, oh, wait, McNichols is coming back. It's going to be a little bit harder. <laughs> Let me just give him the 10. Yeah, McNichols can't. He's, his brain is bleeding on a daily basis. He doesn't yeah. <laughs> you know, think he's taking much away from Hilliard. Baltimore, 20.3 implied points. Cleveland with no tight ends besides Austin Hooper, 22.8 implied points. Pete, you are due to go first on this one. 
find someone who loves the Austin Hooper week 14 storyline more than Spags. This guy will fucking wedge this into any he's conversation. He's, he's like Kendall on succession. He's due for something positive in his life. Oh my God. Nick, do you watch succession? I, uh, I didn't for a long time. I just recently like ran through all the seasons very like uh, a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, I'm, I'm caught up. You I'm, enjoying I'm it? here for the jokes guys. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm chill. I'm not a cop. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's do uh, – so we have the Browns coming off the bye here. Um, man, I'm so sad about Rashad Bateman just no longer being a thing uh, after looking like he might be a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, let's do – what is it? Three-pointer uh, Kareem Hunt outscores Nick Chubb? Yeah, it's a three. Yeah. I'm good with that. I'll take kind it. of a classic three. Nick, what do you want? Um, I want I want to go with very similar to your Marvin Jones take, but I'm going to say for uh, DPJ Donovan Peoples Jones, high scoring skill player um, in this game out of Browns and Ravens. I think mm-hmm. that's sharp. I think that's a ten when you factor in Marquise Chubb, Andrews, Landry. Yeah, Hunt. I, w- I would give it. If you put Lamar in there, it would certainly be an easy ten. But I think it's a close enough ten. I'll give it. We'll um, give it. Trying to look cool here. Not we're a not here. We're not here for style points. We're here to win. <laughs> Um, how about if Devonta Freeman outscores both Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt? Is that a 10 pointer? I got a nod from Nick. No, he only projects <laughs> like three points less. I need you. He needs to outscore them by five, four and a half. Fine. I'll give you <laughs> five, four and a half. Bullshit. I love how you just want a moral W. That's all you want. Yeah, it's I, true. It I also can like, it can't be five anyway, because it has to. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but that's, you know, look, you got to take the victories where you can get them. I say that Dallas 26.3 implied points guaranteed win. According to Mike McCarthy coming up against Washington, 21.8 implied points on their end. And Nick, you are due to go first. Um, This one's probably going to be in limo. I think CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper both go over uh century mark and a touchdown. A hundred and a Ooh. score for both. All right. I, 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 it's like their run defense is. I should. I guess I shouldn't make the case because you guys need to decide the, the points. But how about this? I will give you the ten pointer if you kind of adjust it to what my DK Metcalf Tyler Lockett one was twenty five points each. Which in your projection they probably get there on PPR mm-hmm. anyways. Um, because you're already booking in at least how about, sixteen. How about uh, how about twenty four point five PPR? <laughs> this is the Spags playbook. Fine, twenty four point five plus Book for it. each of them. Book it. All right, I will take a man that I, I think I put in our low ball lineup this week, but I'm rethinking it today. I think Ezekiel Elliott is due. What if he's the top scoring position player in the game, Pete? Is that a 10-pointer? No, because I was about to uh, to do him uh, oh, yeah. for that I was. Uh, <laughs> if I'll give you... you no, he, he projects really well without Pollard. Yeah. I don't think he, Pollard's going to play. I was actually oh, low-key thinking about going... Corey Clement outscores Ezekiel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I'll have to. I'm not that. doing that, but like I, I was thinking about it. I you All have right. to you have to include the quarterbacks if you even want to have this conversation, Spags. Uh, all right, you know. I will include the quarterbacks then. Zeke, top scoring player in the game for a ten pointer. Yeah, I'll give you ten there, easy. Yeah, I'll give me okay. ten. I'll take it. Um. All right. Do I get a ten if JD McKissick, fresh from the hospital bed? outscores antonio gibson i think so yeah i mean he's still not cleared yet from the protocols all right that kind of leans closer to a three for me than a 10 all right driving a tough bargain here (laughs) um how about this 10 pointer if dalton schultz scores more points than your beloved cd lamb and amari cooper not combined but is the top score of those three i'm down uh, yeah i can give you that Okay. okay, I'll take. I'll book that one. So that is a reasonable ten. Also, a lot of DFS ownership expected for Antonio Gibson on DraftKings for everybody out there that's thinking that's a great play. Las Vegas nineteen implied points. Kansas City twenty nine implied points here. So one of the highest totals of the week for the Chiefs. And I think I'm due to go first in this one. And how about man? I boy, I have really high projections for Renfro and Josh Jacobs. Is what? What's Waller's status? I don't think he's going to play. I don't think he's going to go either. Okay, so that's that's what I was thinking. So. Um, how about, okay. How about Josh Jacobs and Hunter Renfro outscore all of the chiefs position players? So like they're, 
so Josh Jacobs and Renfro combined so they, points. They both over. have to outscore Edwards Hilaire, Williams, Tyreek Hill, Kelsey, et cetera. Yeah, that's a 10 pointer. Okay. Yeah. I'll take it. Pete, what do you want? Um, I'm gonna do just one of our classic turnkey 10 pointers and uh toss Tyreek Hill in the winning Millie Maker lineup this week on DraftKings. Okay, that's a classic 10. Uh Nick, what do you want? Um, I think I want to go something on the Raiders side too. I don't know if I want it Foster Moreau or I <clears throat> kind of want to go Josh Jacobs scores two times as many points as Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Two, two times. times. Yeah. Two times. I think that's a 10 pointer. I would agree. Yeah. All right. All right. Next, next game up. We got new Orleans, 23.8 implied points. The jets, 18.8 implied points. And Nick, you are due to go first now. Okay. Um, Taysom Hill and Alvin Kamara combine for 200 rushing yards and four rushing touchdowns. That's a 10. It's so specific. It's got to be a 10, I would say. 200 rushing yards plus rushing four yard, rushing four touchdowns touch. between the okay. two of them. Yeah. Yeah. See, and as Nick will tell you, as a spokesman for Football Outsiders, DVOA here, really generous <laughs> for the New Orleans Saints. It's 20, or actually 32% DVOA boost for the Saints in this matchup against the Jets. Um, all right. I want to do something with Taysom Hill as well. Can I get, can I get 10 points if he scores more points than this trio of quarterbacks, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson, and Dak Prescott? It's a lofty trio. I don't know he if scores more than all three like of them. Not 10. I mean, it's facts. It's three guys. I like the projection. Okay, so the projection I'm seeing for Taysom Hill is 23. I have met 23.2. I think Lamar was, you know, Lamar's not that far off. Did you say Mahomes is in that group too? But but uh, I didn't no. have Mahomes in that group. I would why, never. Why not just Taysom Hill number one QB on the week? That's 10. No, because I have other number one QBs on the week. <laughs> <laughs> i'll give you a seven and a half let me, you know we don't let have me, those here. all right let me toss in russell wilson he has to outscore four qbs oh the guy that we just talked about needing percocets this week yeah um, who do you want would you rather toss in cam newton I i'm, give him I'm fine Rome. with the fourth quarterback locks it up for me as a 10 pointer I'm all right fine you guys that. can pick do you want the fourth quarterback to be russ or cam i think it's russ yeah we can go with russ okay those right. four. And so help me God, if Cam scores more, it's not even a thing, anything that matters to me now. But I got a principle. <laughs> I, just want that I, sh to be right. I should have doubled down. So if Cam pops off, I win, and you lose your. <laughs> yeah, you got to <laughs> correlate these. Um, how about okay? So then, we, Pete, you've you've established Taysom Hill unequivocally a great play. What yeah. if also ran rookie Zach Wilson were to outscore him in this game? Is that a ten pointer? If Zach Wilson outscored Taysom Hill. Barring, like an a, barring an injury to Hill, I would say that's, I, I would probably give that a 10. Yeah. I do think it's a very sneaky and, uh, and smart bet by Spags. I think, it, I think a in, a, one. <laughs> in a vacuum, it's like an eight pointer, but we're going to round up here. Okay. Thank you. I accept it. Detroit, next game up. We got 16 implied points for them. Denver, 26 implied points, 10 point favorite. And I think Pete, you would do to go first in this one. Yeah. Um, I, I have a feeling Nick's gonna have something with Javante Williams, so I might I might leave that for Nick. Um, let's do this one. I think Noah Fant has a big game. Will you will you give me ten points if he's a hundred yards and a touchdown? I, I I'll, I'm willing to. I don't know that we, we've never used this as a metric on this show. We used that at awesome all the time, which you now gave me give my brain a little bit of a cross. So just to say here, he hasn't cleared a hundred yards receiving this entire season good secondary okay. good secondary pitch i'm in now i'm in <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't before but now that you said that i'm definitely in. all right thank you i mean if it's ever happened like to kobe myers touchdown it just it can't ever happen <laughs> so that's, that's the right. way it goes all right nick what do you want oh man i did want to do something with javante i didn't know which way i wanted to go with it though um you can't decide if you're excited about it or not I, well, I was, I, yeah, I was going to go one of two ways, either that he's like the number one overall fantasy running back this week or Melvin Gordon just straight up outscores him. But I'm going to, I'm going to say, Ooh. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to go Javante Williams, number one overall fantasy running back this week. That's a 10. Yeah. When you include also, that whole field. Also, yeah. Josh in the chat pointing out that you accidentally leveraged against your own locketed Metcalf pick from earlier, which I don't know. Pete, that must be killing you inside. 
No, because we know what wins these weeks is just hitting on a couple of these. So I actually don't worry about correlation in a portfolio sense, Chris. Yeah, the ride or die picks have definitely become more of a parlay where you have to hit one <laughs> in the year and you feel pretty good about yourself. Yes, um, especially if I get my 100-pointer on Visca. <laughs> <laughs> what if I were to say Godwin Iguabuke would outscore Jamal Williams? Is that a 10-pointer? Fine. Okay, I'll take it. I also thought his name had a Z in it for this entire season, and apparently no Zs at all to be found in Godwin's name. <laughs> you learn something new each splash play. Next game up, Giants 16.5 implied points. Chargers 26.5 implied points. And I think I'm due to go first in this one. It is a fucking dumpster fire of a game. Um, Pete, what if I were to say five Chargers <laughs> are uh, scoring higher than all of the Giants players? So just to give Nick some backstory, this is a construction of a bet that I would be proposing early on in the season, and I had a lot of success with it, and then Spags banned it, and now is trying to do it himself. Correct. So a fair bet, some could say. So he's saying that the top five scoring players are all on the Chargers, meaning the fifth uh, guy. So say it would be like, you know, Chargers defense and Jared Cook even outscores Saquon Barkley. That's that's kind of it. Um, because the Chargers are so banged up, and I think the Giants are going to be getting a lot of their guys back, I will actually give you this one. I'll take it. That's, again, another moral victory. I'm racking up the moral victories, <laughs> if not the real ones. <laughs> Nick, what I do, do you want? I am upset at myself, but this is one of the give action to get action, and it means you're going to have to allow me to do this later on as well. I don't even know what games you could do that in left, but I'm curious to see where you go with it. Nick, what do you want in this game? Um, What would I need for 10 points to put Justin Herbert outside of, like, if I said he's outside of the uh, quarterback one range, if he's not a top 12 quarterback this week, is that 10? Do I need to go up to 15? Like, what do I need to be at for being Yeah, because he's projecting. I'm seeing it. He's like a top five option this week. So you're saying if he's... Outside, outside of the top 12. Yeah, finishes the quarterback 13 or 17 or whatever. Okay. I'll I'll give 10 for that. Yeah, quarterback has a pretty – that that would mean that guys like Heineke, Baker, Zach Wilson, a couple of those guys are finishing ahead of him. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. allow that. Okay. All right, Pete, what do you want? Um, Let's see here. I want to do – can I get 10 points if Donald Parham outscores Saquon Barkley? Yeah, yeah, I think that's really good that to you for sure. This is a little hedge against if Spags crushes his bet. Um, maybe I'll be live with a Parham <laughs> over Saquon. I hope it's Trey McKitty <laughs> and, <Jared laughs> Cook doing everything. Trey McKitty, a real human being, by the way, is getting snaps. Buffalo, 25.3 implied points. Tampa Bay, 28.8 implied points. Looked like a Super Bowl preview now, maybe not so much. And I think, Nick, we are back to you going first. Oh, man. I just looked at my notes and like all oh, I, I just wrote the word over like 45 times <laughs> over, over, oh. over like we're fucking playing Mario over here. Blast um, off. All right. Yeah. What do you guys have like a certain type of like bet template for something like this where it's just like everything over? Well, so I did one last week, which was if the Chargers Bengals game had more than I think it was like 65 or 70 yeah. points. So if you want to like adjust the over under, it's at 53 and a half, like. I would give him what over seventy points. For yeah, I mean, well, we could we could do the Greg Ehrenberg thing and look up the alternate lines <laughs> and see which. <laughs> Neither was... of us are looking that up right now. Alarmingly um, efficient for him. I'm trying. Uh, let's see. Uh, alternate can I, spread. Can I, <laughs> can I right. go? Um, what? How many touchdowns between the two quarter? Can I go eight touchdowns between the two quarterbacks? Eight that combined not... passing touchdowns or includes rushing. Well, rushing, you know, Brady's good for like two rushing scores. So eight. So, so the over of 78.5 is plus 1200. Yeah, so no, that that's like, like that's like too outrageous. I feel like for me. Like <laughs> oh I, yeah. Willis reminded us we set the line for that Bengals Chargers game at 67 and a half. Maybe that's just the default. We, oh, should we do like 68 and a half? Cause it's like a fun 69 joke. And that's, we're very mature adults here. 68 and a half. And we round up on this show. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Uh, we owe you half. Okay. Do you want that, Nick? Sure. Yeah, run it. All right, 68 and a half. Uh, what if I just take the least fun pick ever, and I'm like, yeah, I'll just take uh, one pointer on the under at 53 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> How about under 68 and a half? <laughs> yes. Um, no, I'll come up with something more creative. I'll do a pretty classic three-pointer, and I'll say Dawson Knox outscores Gronk. 
Okay. That's a reasonable. Yeah, that's a very classic three pointer. Also, just for everybody out there who's playing along at home, over sixty eight and a half is plus four sixty. So actually, you're not even getting that good of an odds on on FanDuel Sportsbook <laughs> at least. Um, what if, what Suck if it. Devin Singletary were the top scoring position player in the game? That's got to yeah, be that's, an easy ten. That's ten. You can have okay. as many as you want. For that. <laughs> <laughs> Nick was like over, 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 and then he said Devin Singletary. And we said under. <laughs> But Matt, at least he's not Matt Breida now. He's out snapping Matt Breida. They got that going for him. both him and Zach Moss. Yeah, wow. just until he's not. That's how that goes. <laughs> San Francisco, 25.3 implied points. Cincinnati, 23.8 implied points. Lots of injuries in the backfield. Pete, you can go first. Yes. Um, I will say uh, Jamar Chase, highest scoring player in this game, including quarterbacks. Uh, that feels like a three at this point. All right, uh, highest scoring player by three points. Uh, I can give a ten on that. Three and a half. I knew you were gonna do that, <laughs> and I was already I was willing to go up to four. I knew you were gonna say three and a half. Agreed on three and a half. <laughs> the meta game within the meta game. <laughs> All right. I think I this will... is. Jo- I think Josh is a BDGE guy who's catching the show for the first time, and he's he's really quickly getting on to some of our tricks here. Where yeah, we Josh... leave the witness with how we frame it. Yeah, Josh is certainly a diehard. I'm very <laughs> very familiar with Josh. He's got my he's got my fucking back out here. <laughs> Somebody has to because you guys are double teaming me right now. <laughs> Welcome to our nonsense, Josh. We appreciate you coming along. I will go in this one. Ju- okay. What if Jawan Jennings were to outscore George Kittle? Is that a 10-pointer? I can give you 10 there for sure. Pete doesn't want to give me 10, but uh, Nick already did. So Say, I guess. It, say <laughs> it one more time. Jawan Jennings outscoring George Kittle. Yeah, that's a 10. Okay, thank you. I'll accept it. Nick, what do you want? Yeah, you make the smart bets. It's just like the one for one. And I'm out here like trying to choose four players doing different things. <laughs> it's the veteran savvy that's resulting in us hitting still 10% of our picks on, <laughs> on the year. Feel you. Um, all right. So I want to go if, okay, how do I word this? If Joe Mixon plays, he's going to score fewer than 12 fantasy points, half PPR. If he doesn't play, <laughs> Samaj P. Ryan is going to go over 20 fantasy points. This is like a dichotomous key uh, trying to set this up. It's just here. me telling you how much better Samaj P. Ryan is than Joe Mixon, realistically. Okay. I, I like this. Uh, our accountant, Willis, is going to have to write down all this fine print, but uh, I'll give it a 10. Yeah, that was like a logic question from those like math yeah. classes. And things. <laughs> well, it just depends on whether or not Joe Mixon plays. It's like if Joe Mixon plays, he's going to do bad. If he doesn't, P. Ryan is going to be really good. And I, I almost think the more I think about it, it's probably like a six, but just because he packed in so much uh ephemera into that question that he just convinced me yeah that has to be a 10 it sounds convoluted yeah, it now i'm be. looking at it i feel like nick's working us here because he uh, did work got more yards after contact on the year than mixon more of higher avoided tackle rate mm-hmm. but he's also there's a really good chance mixon plays and like if he does he's probably not scoring fewer than 12 fantasy points so uh, there's like a two-pronged approach here where like i'm kind of fucked either way all right, so you're getting the game with right? the game. Josh is proud in the chat. <laughs> sure. All right, Sunday nighter. We got Chicago getting 15 implied points. Green Bay game 28 implied points. Normally, uh, Nick, we would do just a showdown winning captain, but um, you, you don't have to do a DFS win if you don't want. You can just pick a top score. So any top score in this game, skill player, yeah, quarterback. 10 points, yeah. Um, PPR. I guess I'll say. Uh, I'll go Devontae Adams. Very reasonable pick. Very the the sharp pick for sure. I will I'll go with AJ Dillon. Okay. I will leverage off of Nick's pick and go to one Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Right, there it there is. There the right. We don't like pick. the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the poor Bears were Justin Fields. Remember we all love Justin Fields. Now he's getting 15 implied points and nobody wants anything to do with him. So good sad. times. All right, Nick, give the people the plugs again. Of course, you are at Nick Ercolano on all the social media, I believe, and also on YouTube. People should check out the content. Again, I legitimately was just going through it last night, having a good time watching your stuff and really enjoyed the vibe. So I'm subscribed now and everybody else out there should be, but tell the people what else you want. Um, that's really it. Uh, you can go check me out, as he said, uh, Nick Ercolano. That's the YouTube channel for now. We will be uh, switching it over to the actual brand name soon, BDGE, Big Dogs Got to Eat. Um, but yeah, hit me up on there. Uh, I'm available on Twitter if you want to talk shit to me. It's probably the only people I actually answer to on Twitter. If they, you got to rile me up to get a to get a response out of me. But Twitter, Instagram, it's all it's all gravy over there. 
All right, Pete, what do you have coming up this weekend? People should be following you at Peter Rivers as well, as well, of course. Yeah, we're actually, I'm doing the rare uh, Saturday stream. We flexed lulls to Saturday for uh, UFC. Uh, we're going to do a little companion show. So we're going to do some DFS, bring some friends on John Kelly, who uh, actually just shipped uh, yeah, the DraftKings uh, showdown slate for like 350000 and is uh, an MMA thought leader. He's going to join us. We'll have some other guests swinging by. So we'll be doing that tomorrow night. And then uh, Sunday morning, we'll be back for the GPP DFS uh, slate preview at uh, at ten thirty. All right, so make sure to follow Pete at Peter Overzet. Follow Nick at Nick Ur- uh, Nick Urcolano. Follow me at Chris Bax, and of course follow at Splash Play Pod, where we're following everybody back on there because we appreciate your guys' support. I'll be back Monday two thirty Eastern. So enjoy your weekends. Good luck. 